I think it was Guy Clark who said you can make a choice, either you're going to pursue being a star or pursue being an artist. So that's kind of the route that I've taken, wanting to write the best songs I can. But I love performing too. If you can connect with one person in the audience and they're having a better day because of a song you've played, that's, that's just the best feeling in the whole world. I'm Libby Koch and I'm a singer-songwriter from Houston, Texas. Well, I started writing songs about 15 or 16, but it was kind of something that I kept private. I would do a few concerts at church, and I played a couple of coffee shops in college, but it was something I never considered doing professionally until I went to law school in Nashville. And then I started playing around there, you know, like you do, and really got encouraged by some people who knew what they were talking about, like, hey, you're good at this. And I was like, oh, okay. I, I didn't, you know. I'm gonna sing this gospel song till I die, yes, just being in Nashville, I became completely immersed in the music scene, and I really discovered the kind of music that I loved and, the, and eventually the kind of artist that I would want to be. And it was just a total life changer. You know, I grew up with the Motown and the old school Texas country, but this was something I hadn't heard before. It was kind of the sound that I'd been searching for. I found her picture in my Nana's old scrapbook. I got great clerkships after my first and second year, and I had offers to go work at all the big law firms in downtown Houston. I thought about going to DC or Atlanta maybe, but at the end of the day, I just really decided to come back home. I was working at the law firm. I'd been there five years. I knew that I didn't want to stay at the law firm forever. I went and met with a mentor of mine. Her name's Marty DeBusk. She's a brilliant attorney and a good friend. And we had lunch, and I said, you know, Marty, what do you, what, what should I do next? What would you do? Should I go work for another firm? Should I try to go in-house somewhere? Do I get a headhunter? How do I do this? And at the time, my music had kind of been taken off, and she said, well, Libby, why don't you take a year off and pursue music? And it was like, what? I can't do that. <laughs> uh, wait a minute, can I do that? <laughs> I had already released an EP and an album and my first record, and I had the songs written for a second one. And I was playing more and more shows. We were drawing great crowds here in Houston, and I thought, well, shoot, maybe I can do this. No mercy, please, no right before I left the law firm, I met my drummer, Joe Devadonham, who is still playing with me. I brought him in to play drums on this new record that I was making that I recorded at my dad's place out in the country. That was my second full-length record, The Shadow of This Town, which I put out during that first year. And that one got some good reviews, and I got nominated for a Houston Press Music Award and a Texas Music Award. Suddenly, things kind of took off. I tell you, I wish you the best things in this life. I usually play somewhere between 150 and 175 gigs a year. The goal is to keep people coming out to the live shows because that's where we're able to make our living, to stay out on the road and to keep people excited about new music. The best description that I liked the most was one that my producer, Bill Vorndick, said that my music sounded like the love child between Patsy Cline and Tom Petty, and I thought, that is awesome. <laughs> From across the street or across the world, you can come to Houston, and if you work hard, there's opportunity. Houston, I think, is a place that values and rewards hardworking dreamers. And that's, that's me.